Hey everyone, this lesson is on the physical sign known as clubbing. So this lesson is going to be a bit different than usual. We're gonna talk about what clubbing is. We're also gonna talk about the physical sign we can look at to see if someone does have clubbing. We're also gonna talk about why it happens and we're also gonna talk about a list of causes of clubbing. So clubbing is a clinical feature or physical sign involving a bulbous or bulging enlargement of the distal ends of the fingers and or the toes. So it can happen on fingers and toes. So the fingers, the distal ends of the fingers, the fingertips look like this. And really clubbing is actually a morphological change due to swelling and growth of connective tissue resulting in a reduced angulation of the nail with respect to the nail plate. So that might seem like a lot of words that don't really make sense. So if we look at it again, it's swelling and growth or proliferation of connective tissue at the distal ends of digits, either fingers or toes and it changes the angulation of the nail with respect to the nail plate. We're gonna look at this a little bit more detail later. So it all comes down to what we call Shamroth sign. So Shamroth sign is the clinical feature we look at to see if someone has clubbing. So really Shamroth's sign is positive when we lose Shamroth's window. So again, don't worry if you don't know what this means right now. So if we take a look at fingers, if we actually put fingers up together like this, this area, this opening here is Shamroth's window. So a little closer, here's Shamroth's window. In clubbing, we actually lose Shamroth's window. You can see here that the angulation of the nail has changed and we actually don't get that same opening. So with clubbing, we lose Shamroth's window. So again, we put our two index fingers together like this. This is normally how we look at clubbing and there's usually a gap in between. That's Shamroth's window. With clubbing, that gap or that Shamroth's window is gone. It's lost because of the morphological change in the fingertips or the toes or the distal ends of the toes. So we lose Shamroth's window. This is called Shamroth's sign and this is positive for clubbing. So what are some other clinical features of clubbing? So oftentimes clubbing is painless. It's a painless process. It's bilateral. And if it's unilateral, it may be due to issues with local blood flow to the surrounding tissues. So sometimes you might see a unilateral clubbing on one hand, but oftentimes it's because there's a local issue with blood flow. And clubbing is often a chronic and unnoticed process of enlargement. So oftentimes patients don't even realize it's happening. So again, it's painless, bilateral, and it's chronic. And although it's oftentimes chronic, it may have an acute onset. If it is acute, it can progress rapidly. And if it does that, patients may experience discomfort. So I talked about being painless and chronic, but if it's acute and it's rapidly progressive, we basically throw this out. If it's acute, they actually may have some discomfort at the distal ends of their digits. And what is often found is that the first digits to be affected are the thumb and the forefinger. And then after that, other digits are affected. And as clubbing progresses, during the early onset of clubbing, there may be something called the floating nail sign. So what is the floating nail sign? So the floating nail sign, we see this in early clubbing. So in early clubbing, we might start to see some change in the angulation of the nail. So we start to see something like this. It starts to look like clubbing, but it's not quite in its mature form. And what happens is if you actually push down on the edge where the nail meets the skin right on that edge here, it can actually be pushed down. So it is said to feel like it's floating. Whereas if it's normal nail, it doesn't move. And if it's a completely clubbed nail, it doesn't move either. So if we were to push again, push down on this section of the nail, it will move slightly. That is what the floating nail sign is. Now we talked about clubbing being a swelling or proliferation of the connective tissue at the distal ends of the digits. But what is the exact underlying mechanism? The exact underlying mechanism is not entirely known. There is some theories as to possible mechanisms of clubbing and it comes from this article from 1981 entitled Digital Clubbing and Hypertrophic Osteoarthropathy, The Underlying Mechanisms. And from this article, there's actually four proposed causes. One is that there's a circulating vasodilator. Another possible cause is tissue hypoxia. 
a third is neurocirculatory reflex, and a fourth is certain genetic factors. So we'll see how these proposed causes play in with the actual underlying conditions that can cause clubbing in the next coming slides. So now that we know those four proposed causes, what are some associated diseases and conditions that lead to clubbing? So a lot of these conditions have to do with chronic hypoxia. It does seem that chronic hypoxia may be a main underlying cause of clubbing, and that's one of the proposed mechanisms we talked about in the last slide. So we're going to see that most of these causes we're going to look at have to do with chronic hypoxia, but there are some that don't. So we're going to see that as well. So we're going to break it down by system. So pulmonary causes are actually the most common cause of clubbing. These include lung cancer, cystic fibrosis, interstitial lung disease, empyema, sarcoidosis, and mesothelioma. So these are examples of certain lung conditions that can lead to clubbing. The next category of causes is cardiac causes. So cardiac causes are actually the second most common cause of clubbing. And we see this with congenital heart disease. We see it with infective endocarditis. We see it with core pulmonale. And we see it with chronic congestive heart failure. So these are some of the other causes of clubbing. So as you can see, these main categories of associated conditions are related to hypoxia and tissue perfusion. So there's some related mechanism here. Now there are some other associated conditions as well. These are in the hepatic category. So conditions involving the liver. So one of them is primary biliary cirrhosis. Another one is amoebic liver abscesses. So literally abscesses in the liver caused by entamoeba histolytica. You can see this also with hepatic amyloidosis. And the category of gastrointestinal causes include inflammatory bowel disease. So we see this with ulcerative colitis. We can see it with chronic amoebic dysentery. Other causes include hypertrophic osteoarthropathy, and hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is a bit different. I'm going to talk briefly about it because it is slightly different with regards to its presentation. It is actually painful. We talked about it being a painless process, but hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is a painful process. It involves periostitis, and it may be associated with fever and joint effusion as well. And some other causes or other associated conditions with clubbing include thyrotoxicosis, pregnancy, hyperthyroidism, alcohol, chronic myelogenous leukemia, renal carcinoma, hemoglobinopathies, and toxin exposure, like exposure to mercury and arsenic. So again, these causes that we're talking about here, and even the causes in the last slide, don't necessarily have to cause clubbing. They are associated with clubbing, but they don't necessarily cause clubbing, or not necessarily always going to be associated with clubbing. So not everybody that has inflammatory bowel disease is going to have clubbing. Not everybody that is pregnant is going to have clubbing. So these are associated conditions, but not necessarily always going to be related to clubbing. Now there's also hereditary clubbing. So you might find that there's a patient that has no underlying condition that is causing the clubbing, but they still have clubbing. And they also note that their family members also have clubbing. So there is a hereditary cause of clubbing as well. And then there's also idiopathic. We just don't know what is causing it. So idiopathic is essentially something that after we've gone through the list of causes, we still don't know what it is. It is idiopathic. So what is the treatment for clubbing? So clubbing may be a sign of a serious underlying condition. We talked about a lot of serious underlying conditions in the last couple of slides. So it's important to identify and treat the underlying cause. And what's interesting about clubbing is that clubbing is often an acquired physical sign and it can be reversed after the underlying cause is treated. So it, I say it's often acquired. Sometimes we talk about it being a hereditary clubbing, so they might already have it and there's really no reversing that. But if it's acquired, we can actually reverse it if we identify and treat the underlying cause. So very interesting. So again, it may be a sign of a serious underlying condition. It's important to identify and treat underlying causes, and it can be reversed if it has been an acquired clubbing. So if you want to learn more about other physical examination signs, please check out my clinical skills playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.